Hello everyone, Anita here and welcome to week 17 of the 52 week illustration challenge. Um, this week's theme is a little bit of an experiment for me, another theme, the painting, is a bit of an experiment because you've probably noticed I have a bit of a different palette and that's because I'm actually using different kind of paints. Uh, I've received a box of acrylic gouache and so this whole painting was just uh, an experiment after experiment. Uh, so as you can see, here I have two little um, wells in my palette filled with a really watered down paint and my first experiment was to see how well I could lay down flat washes and it went pretty well. I wanted to see how much they layered, how intense I could get the color to be, basic, just the basic like, like you would do with watercolor. Now for my next test, I laid down a little... Um, like strips of masking tape, the same masking tape I used for holding my <laughs> painting in place. And I wanted to see if anything would happen to the acrylic gouache just under that paint, if it would hold well, uh, I mean, if the masking tape would hold well, if it would rip the paint, if it would damage the painting, just, you know, also the usual. And I have to say, I was really, really surprised. Um, I'm kind of getting used to the way of painting with it. It's a little bit different. It doesn't seem like that much of a difference, but to me, it feels a lot different. Just the way I'm mixing the paint, the way it spreads, the way I'm laying the washes. Uh, in one way, I absolutely love it. Uh, and I'm definitely going to paint more. In another way, I'm, I was like half of the times so was like, ah. Oh. I don't feel like just doing this. I just want to, you know, the old regular stuff. I don't want to learn new things. And, um, but I really enjoy painting with this paint and it's just the effect is so nice. It's, it's totally worth the pain. <laughs> so I was kind of experimenting here with laying opposite gradients. So I would do the blue from the top and then gray from the bottom. Now the gray is very pale. I didn't want this painting to be too dark. So, you know, I didn't really have too much of that gray there, but it is there, it is there. It's completely covered. So at some point I didn't even see the gray because everything was covered in gray. And because that was another thing I wanted to try, I wanted to see how well the paint layered, how opaque it was. So as you can see, everything went well. I took off the uh, masking tape really without any problems at all. Of course, I warmed it up. <laughs> I have warmed it up. So, you know, it, it came off really nicely. And here I'm adding some uh, more of that same color, just a little bit. I've added a little bit more paint, so it's a bit more opaque. And I'm trying to recreate the same effect I usually do with, um, with soft pastels. Because that's kind of the, 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 the finishing touch of my painting is usually that soft pastel in the uh, at the edges. And uh, what I wanted to see here also was if I could paint without worries, without planning ahead, if I could just keep adding paint as much as I wanted without um, thinking that, oh, perhaps something will be visible from underneath. So I wanted to see if I could put a darker color first and then if I could top it <laughs> with a different color and how that would affect the shades, because I'm still painting with a rather a translucent, um, watered down version of that uh, acrylic gouache. I would just call it gouache. <laughs> it's easier. So I'm, I'm painting with the watered down versions a little bit more translucent. So it will, of course, get affected with, with, uh, by what's underneath. But so far, so good. <laughs> Here, another experiment, I wanted to find out if I could lighten up some areas to make them kind of glow, especially that these are bottles. I just wanted to see if I could add white on top of these, um, on top of the existing background, just to, you know, erase it, I suppose. I can't lift that color, so I, it's kind of like acrylic paint, you just paint on top of what you have. Uh, but it works still like general, typical gouache <laughs> that if you water it down too much, of course, it's going to not be, it's going to be milky, not as opaque as I would like to. And I didn't feel like playing with it and uh, making it super opaque and just, you know, um, 
blurring it into like you know smudging it all the, all that crazy stuff just that that's not for this day that's maybe for another day <laughs> When I was painting this, um, I was feeling really, really worn out. Um, it seemed to, even though I didn't paint this for so long, it seemed to me like I was painting forever just because of all the different things I had to pay attention to. And because of the learning, you know, learning is very, uh, even though it was super fun, I absolutely love painting, but it still was really tiring. So that's another thing I've noticed. <laughs> painting makes you tired. Uh, tired. <laughs> So uh, probably some of you will ask in the comments, uh, the little palette I'm painting on is actually a DIY kind of thing. It's my regular uh, watercolor palette, but I can just pop off the top and I, I put it aside. So the top part with all the watercolor, watercolor pans. And then at the bottom of the palette, I laid down a few layers of uh, toilet paper. <laughs> I didn't have a kitchen towels anymore. So I laid down the toilet paper, I wetted it down and then I topped it off with um, just a layer of baking -ish like paper. And because of that, the acrylic uh, gouache will stay wet for longer because once it dries, of course, it's unusable. Unlike, you know, normal watercolor and gouache. So Keeping it moist like this is a very good technique, <laughs> something that I researched before I actually got these paints, because that was always my biggest problem with also with acrylic as well. Um, just keep making it moist, constantly keeping it moist. And so, um, and it's still good. It's I'm actually uh, recording this voiceover two days after I've painted, and I picked into the palette, and it's still nice and moist. The uh, paint did not dry out and there is no weird smell because I was thinking maybe it will get moldy or something but it didn't so we'll see I'm going to paint a little bit more perhaps later and see how that goes so as you can see there's not really anything that interesting in this uh, painting I just keep adding layers trying to learn how to lay smooth layers, uh, trying to see if I can mix colors, trying to just... I'm really trying to achieve the same techniques and style as I've done with watercolors. So I'm trying to adapt this gouache to my needs yet again. <laughs> and it's working, so far it's working perfectly because um, I can pretty much do the same thing as I've done with watercolor. It's of course a little bit different, but because I can layer one on top of the existing layer, um, I couldn't do that with the regular gouache. You know, it's working much better, basically, for my needs. And the colors are super pigmented. I was in love with that red. <laughs> you can see I've used it everywhere. And that first, very first painting, I did not go um, beyond the colors in my um, my tubes. So I basically chose a few colors from straight from the tubes. And just mixed it uh, on the palette, uh, just made it lighter or darker depending on my need. I figured uh, it was not exactly what I envisioned, but I figured that this is the best way to kind of start. So the theme for this week was actually collector, collector. <laughs> I was convinced the whole week that it was collection. Um, that's why it's kind of hard to get, you know, past that and <laughs> say collector. The theme was collection, um, collector. Let's uh, see, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> the theme for this week was collector. And the first thing that popped in my head was um, nail polish immediately. <laughs> it was nail polish. I um, I love collecting nail polish. I don't have that much, but I love glitter nail polishes and I've started my collection just recently. But I also have a friend who is a nail artist and she has an enormous nail polish collection. And so that was just kind of like the first thing that popped in my head when, uh, when I heard the word collection. Uh, so initially I wanted to have this woman sitting in um, like this round room 
filled top to bottom with shelves of nail polish. And that was my first idea. I was absolutely in love with it. I was like, yes, let's do it. And I had a sketch ready, everything ready, and then I thought about it. And this was another one of those ideas when I, I'm overachieving. Like, I have to learn to make pieces that are appropriate for the moment. I don't have time to sit hours uh, uh, on top, like on top of hours, just filling in tiny bottles of nail polish, making different shapes and all that, which was required in that case. And so I, you know, I dropped that idea. <laughs> I kind of replaced the whole background. There's that um, little, you can see the round floor there because that's the same floor I had envisioned for the uh, initial piece. But I've replaced it with just wallpaper and just um, like water, like <laughs> nail polish bottles hanging from the ceiling and there's just one little shelf behind her. It's not exactly satisfying. It's not my favorite idea, but it was necessary at that time. You just have to compromise on some things. You know, perhaps I will revisit the idea at some point and make a bigger piece. That would be pretty cool. Um, and this character is actually um, inspired by a, the recent movie, the movie I've recently watched. It's an old movie called Hairspray, but the newer version, not the old one. And uh, if, if you've watched Hairspray, and now I've said it, you'll definitely see the resemblance. The big hair, um, the dresses, just everything so big. And um, I was really... Um, captivated by Queen Latifah's just curves, I think. I just really wanted to draw a kind of like curvy woman with a big bum and with a big, you know, chest and just very curvy. Now, I kind of feel like the curves disappear slightly under this dress because the dress kind of takes over here. It wasn't really a dress. It's kind of like like a morning... Um, robe, I suppose. <laughs> just like a little robe that you wear in the morning. Um, just an idea that she's sitting, preparing for to go out and, you know, in her room that was supposed to be filled with nail polish. But maybe it's, it's you know, she's just started her collection as well. <laughs> you never know. And so the dress is red, um, just because I really like the color. And so I figured it kind of makes made sense to you know, keep all the nail polishes in different shades of red. I don't know, it made sense in my head. I've added a little bit of purple to them, just a bit of a sheen. I wanted to see how that will work and um, just just an idea, basically, because she's um, having like this shake in her hand that's purple. <laughs> that's why I figured, you know, I'm just gonna add a little tiny bit of purple um, to the reds, just to add a hint of different color. I don't know, it seemed a little bit boring with just the reds and, and blues. Especially that the grey kind of disappeared in the end. And so I'm filling in all the bottles, just mixing uh, different shades of blue in my palette. Um, the background um, bottles, the, the ones that are a little bit more in the distance, are mixed with white and yellow. While the ones in the front are mixed primarily with a little bit of black. And um, to create kind of like an idea of distance. Initially I wanted to paint the front bottles black, but I felt that with all the light color in the front it would be just too much. Just too much. <laughs> it would be too dark. And um, I'm having a bit of a trouble with outlining these. Uh, once again, I do not want to use a fine liner. I'm totally past fine liners. Uh, I mean black fine liners. Um, so I pulled out this pit pen that I had just laying around just because it was the least use of all my other pit pens and even though it's brown it still kind of works um, and it has the finest tip um, of all the pit pens I had so I'm using that just very gently I was barely putting any pressure on it just trying to get the thinnest line possible um, I'm, I'm not wasn't very happy with that pen, but and here I'm using um, the actual fine liner in the same way I've used it in the previous and some previous painting just um, Adding black to the shadows kind of like shadow lines Sh lines in the shadows <laughs> And then I went the lazy way. I was so fed up with <laughs> trying out the new paints that I just picked out um, picked up the white gel pen to 
draw in some uh, highlights and some um, strings that are holding up the bottles. So there will be a set of white strings in the back and then black strings in the front. Just to mix it up a bit. Um, I don't know, I just did the whole painting. is a, such a big experiment for me. At some point I just stopped caring if it was... Um, if it made sense or not. It was just uh, for fun. That for fun is good too. Especially that black gouache is so creamy. I am absolutely in love with the... <laughs> that would be really good for calligraphy. I am... I'm absolutely convinced. Too bad I don't do calligraphy. And that's it guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave me a like if you did. It helps me more than you know. It's just, you know, that YouTube game we all have to play. And uh, yeah, if you would like to see this painting in more detail, then head to my uh, Facebook page. And I will see you guys next time. Bye!